Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's actually been quite a while since I've done like a start to finish like in-depth tutorial split into parts on YouTube. All of my main tutorials are over on Patreon and I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, so you can go and check that out if you want to. There's over like a hundred, I think, um, in-depth tutorials, focus tutorials, all animal based, all um, kind of focusing on coloured pencils as well. So for this tutorial, I thought I would draw two little harvest mice um, and I'm working on extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper and I've already drawn out the outline. Um, I have left the reference photo in the top left corner so you can kind of follow along. But I've also left the actual reference photo also in the description below so you can access that and draw along with me. So in terms of coloured pencils, I'm going to be using a mixture of Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and Faber-Castell Polychromos. So to make a start then, I'm going to use the Buff Titanium Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil. This is like a really, really pale um, kind of yellowy colour which is perfect for base layers and whenever you draw an animal fur you really want to kind of zoom into the reference photo and pick out the lightest colour that you can see in the fur and use that as um, the base layer and kind of shade in that entire area so obviously in the reference photo here there's kind of a really pale um, yellowy colour in the fur so that's what I'm starting with for the entire kind of body and the head as well just shading in this entire area so I'm using kind of a light to medium pressure you don't want to go in too heavy handed straight away I'm also shading in the same direction as the fur so it's all kind of uh, really fluffy and almost like flicking out at the edges all the way around the body and on the face it's kind of going up around the eye so you want to make sure that you're shading in the right direction I also find that for base layers I like to use um, luminance pencils more than polychromos. Luminance pencils are predominantly wax based so they're a much softer pencil which is obviously really good for base layers because it provides that kind of creamier base to work on top of. Um, I'd also say it doesn't really matter if you go in with a really sharp pencil or a blunt pencil. I've gone in with initially a sharp pencil but then I've started to use the bluntest part of the tip if you can see that it's kind of worn down and it just gives you a softer line and a bigger kind of surface area to work with so you can kind of shade in that area a lot quicker. So something like that, you can see how pale and kind of creamy this colour is. And then I'm also going to use it going down the tail as well. Now the lighting is coming from the left to right, so the left hand side of the tail is kind of being hit directly by the light, so it's very um, pale. I'm just going to use um, a rubber just to make these initial outlines a little bit more subtle. We don't want the initial pencil lines to be too overpowering, especially around the edges. Um, I'm going to soften them slightly with the rubber. So going back in with that buff titanium then, 
I'm going to lightly shade all the way down the tail on mainly the left hand side. So I'm just going to go back in with the eraser and very lightly rub away those kind of initial outlines along the edges. I probably should have done this first before adding the buff titanium, but um, it doesn't really matter. We can kind of shade that back in in a minute. This is the swordfish eraser. As you can see, it's very well used, not the cleanest, but um, it's really, really good, especially on this paper. It doesn't leave any kind of rubber marks or anything like that. It just keeps everything really clean. Um, so I'm just going to go back in with the buff titanium and just shade to the edges, almost like flicking out at the ends as well. Just any areas that you might have um, kind of rubbed off. Like that. So after you've added your first initial base layer, you then want to go in and add um, your kind of subtle shadows and map out where they are. So I'm going to use the raw umber 10% luminance pencil. The 10% just means how kind of vibrant or saturated that colour is. So it's still fairly pale, but it is a little bit darker than this buff titanium. So I'm going to start again shading in the same direction as the fur, doing kind of back and forth um, motions with my pencil strokes, basically just to kind of build up that fur texture from, you know, the very beginning of the drawing. And I'm starting kind of behind the ear and like along the edge of the face where there's quite a lot of darker shadow. Whenever you're working near the edges, you just want to keep your pencil strokes really kind of light and wispy and almost flick at the end of each pencil stroke. So, um, you know, those kind of wispy hairs along the edges just look really kind of fluffy. That's the only way really to build up that kind of fluffy fur texture. I'm going to also add some kind of shadows to the face as well. And also down the right hand side of the tail and just kind of merge it with that buff titanium towards the left. So 
So the next base layer that I'm going to add is the Olive Brown 10% Luminance Pencil. This is a little bit more kind of yellowy, so it's going to be good for that kind of brighter yellowy undertone that's showing like underneath the fur. So I'm going to work kind of into the mid tones, so kind of along the edges of the shadows that we've just added in. Again, going in the same direction as the fur, just building up these layers and I'm applying a medium pressure. Flicking out at the edges. So the point of having like brighter undertones um, is basically just to capture the lighting that's bouncing off the fur. Um, sometimes the lighting can really bring out some of those more kind of rich, vibrant colours that are in the fur. So this is to kind of, um, you know, have that underneath so they kind of shine through as we continue to add more layers. Also just going to add a little bit to the tail. Using it as kind of a mid-tone in between the light area on the left and the darker shadows on the right. All the way down. And then with a similar colour but it's slightly more um, vibrant if you can see that. I'm going to use the Naples Okra, again another luminance pencil, and in those brightest parts in the fur where it does look really kind of yellowy, I'm going to add this colour. So you can see how well it's blending with those pigments around it and those ones underneath, but it's also just adding that extra kind of pop of yellow. It's a bit brighter, a bit more vibrant. So I'm adding that down the tail as well where we just added that olive brown 10%. I'm going to add a touch to kind of around the edge of the body. So it should look something like that. You can see that all of the pigments that we've added so far are kind of really nicely blended together. Um, that's kind of what you get with luminance pencils, like I said before, because they're predominantly wax based, they are a softer pencil than the um, polychromos, which are more kind of oil based. They're a little bit harder. Um, so for base layers, they do work really, really well in just providing that nice kind of creamy surface to work on top of. 
So I'm going to go in now with um, a polychromo in the shade Nugget. And this is like a kind of mousy brown colour, like a light brown. Um, so perfect for this kind of fur. I've sharpened it with the Swordfish Icon sharpener. This is like, if you want a really, really kind of fine point, this is the perfect sharpener to use. I have tried the Jacquard Electric sharpener as well. Um, and that also works really well, but I feel like the Swordfish Icon just gets that extra kind of sharp point at the end, which is perfect for kind of smaller details like this when you're working on a bit of a smaller scale. So with the shade Nugget then, I'm going to start working from the shadows in the fur, doing kind of back and forth lines, kind of overlapping each other, um, you know, going over the same area a few times just to build up that colour and that darkness. You want to be quite delicate with your pencil strokes um, and really think about, you know, how that fur would, would feel. Really think about the texture. tip of the pencil does become quite blunt quite quickly um, so you just need to keep kind of rotating it so you constantly have the sharpest edge to work with if that makes sense just so you can get that, those really really fine lines So for these longer kind of fluffy hairs, these wispy hairs along the edges, um, I'm holding my pencil a bit further up so it's a bit kind of looser. I'm not as like in control of it and I'm literally not even applying a hard pressure at all. Like I'm not even applying any pressure. I'm just letting it almost like slide across the paper just to keep that line really, really subtle. So you should get these really faint kind of overlapping wispy lines which should hopefully kind of capture that fluffy texture of the fur. You almost want them to like disappear into the paper like right at the end.
So what the shadows and details are starting to do is almost like form the head of the um, of the little mouse. Okay. So we can start to see, you know, which parts of the mouse are kind of in front and behind each other. We know that the head is, um, you know, coming towards us more than the body is and that this ear is kind of forming as well. So remember when you're building up this fur texture, it's just constant back and forth motions with your pencil strokes, keeping it really kind of delicate. And you almost want to make the ends of each of your lines kind of fade off into the surrounding fur, just so it all kind of merges together nicely. Just by kind of, you know, lifting your pencil off gradually at the end of each each line of each pencil stroke. Obviously don't think about it too much, just as long as you're kind of delicate and light um, when you're shading and adding in this kind of initial detail, then you should kind of build up this texture. Obviously with colored pencils, it does take, you know, quite a while. You do have to be patient with it. Particularly pay attention to the fur around the eye. There's a lot of kind of subtle direction changes. So you want to make sure you get those accurate.
then I'm going to take this down to the tail and start working from the kind of right to the left, so from those shadows to the more highlighted part. You can see how well it's just, you know, blending with those um, luminance pencil layers underneath. I think using a mixture of polychromos and luminance in your drawings, um, they just they complement each other really well. One being like really creamy and one being a lot harder. So it's, you know, it's, one's good for detail and one's good for kind of helping things to blend together. So they do really complement each other really well, especially if you're wanting to draw you know, like realistic um, animals or portraits or, you know, anything really. Just if you, you know, wanting to delve into colour pencils, I'd definitely recommend um, polychromos and luminance. So the tail actually gets lighter as it, you know, goes towards the bottom um, and it gets a little bit thinner as well. So I'm going to fade off those shadows as I approach the bottom of the tail. We want to make sure that the shadows are kind of darkest in the top right hand corner. But we'll add those dark pigments in in a little bit. Um, but with this nugget, we want to make sure that it's kind of two thirds of the way across, leaving that um, buff titanium in initial layer showing on the left hand side where the kind of lighting is directly hitting the tail. So already it kind of looks like the tail isn't a flat object, it looks like it's, you know, kind of going round. There's, there's obviously a 3D element there which we're kind of bringing in as well. Um, to the very tip of the tail, I am just going to add a little bit of this nugget colour. like that. So at this point I'm going to make a start on the eyes. We can only see the right eye slightly. Um, it is covered by the fur and the kind of angle that the mouse's head is in. Um, but I'm going to use a mixture of the dark sepia polychromo and the black just to really kind of darken some of those areas and, and give it that depth. So to start with I'm going to use the dark sepia. Again I've made it really really sharp so it's got that pinpoint sharp edge. And I'm going to start by kind of going over all those initial outlines, all those kind of pencil lines that I can see already, just so we can get the basic shape of the eye and all of those kind of uh, light reflections and highlights in the eye as well. Make sure we get the right kind of proportions and shapes going on. So much happy with those kind of outer shapes and those um, shapes of the highlights inside the eye. You can then start to shade in around them just to fill in that really kind of dark eye. And then just gradually add kind of layer by layer to almost smooth out that grainy texture from the paper underneath and kind of squash down the tooth so it's completely smooth.
So then with the black, I'm really going to darken those kind of inner edges, making sure the jet black. So something like that. So for those really, really tiny kind of intricate highlights, mainly kind of around the edge of the eye, um, I'm gonna go in with the craft knife slice tool. Now this is basically like a, you can hold it like a pen and it's got a ceramic blade at the end of, at the end of it. And um, it's not that sharp, you know, you're not gonna cut yourself on it, but it does work incredibly well with color pencils. So the idea is that once you've built up quite a few layers of colour pencil, you can use it to kind of scrape away those top layers um, and it reveals the paper underneath or those kind of initial um, base layers. So you can almost like draw back in those highlights. Um, and the good thing is that because it's a kind of ceramic blade at the edge, you can see with that really, really fine point how fine you can get those lines. Um, something that on this scale you wouldn't really be able to achieve just by using the colour pencils alone so it's really really good you know if you want to kind of elevate that realistic element so I'm going to use this just in the kind of inner corner of the eye just kind of on the right of this bigger highlight section now it does usually work better once you've added a few layers and obviously we've only added the two being the uh, the dark sepia and the black but because i've gone over it quite a few times we have added you know a few layers so i don't know if you can see that on here if i just zoom in like right next to that bigger highlighted section just kind of etched in an extra little bit of highlight basically like the waterline of, of the eye. I'm going to do the same kind of underneath and around as well. Just like that. And if you want to neaten that up a little bit, go in with the black or the dark sepia just to kind of define that highlight. There's a few little details around the eye as well, which go a little bit darker kind of in between those highlights. So I'm just drawing those in with the dark sepia. And then to really kind of brighten those highlights, I know that we've left them kind of blank and drawn around them, but I'm gonna use the white um, Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle Pencil. This is my favourite ever white pencil. Um, it's brilliant for showing up over multiple layers and it's just really good for brightening areas up, um, especially for these kind of highlights in the eyes. The only thing is when you're using it over um, or around kind of darker pigments, it does pick up that pigment on the end of the pencil. So what I like to do is just kind of wipe it off so you're going in with a, a clean pencil every time. Like that. And then you can kind of neaten up those shapes by going back in with your black or your dark sepia, just to make them really refined. I'm also gonna go in with the Fine Nib Uniball Posca Pen which it looks like this. Obviously it's very well used, hence why it's all kind of peeling off. Um, but this is basically like a paint pen. So you give it a shake like this and it's almost like a bit of a liquid coming out, um, like a white 
painterly liquid. So it's a wet medium, but it does work and show up well over colour pencils. Um, the good thing is that when it dries, you can almost kind of scrape away at it and it'll just crumble off. So if you add too much, it's not the end of the world. Um, but it's really good for those kind of specks of highlight in um, in the eyes or like on noses of dogs and stuff like that. So I'm just going to almost like dot in over where we've just added that highlight. And it should really brighten up that area. You can also use it on the outside as well. And then just define that again with your really sharp black pencil. So back to the fur then. If you notice um, around the nose and the feet and a little bit in the tail as well, there's almost like a pinky tone. So what I'm going to do is go in with the pink white luminance pencil as a base layer, especially around the nose and for the feet. This is again a bit like the buff titanium as in it's really really pale but instead of a kind of pale yellow tone it's obviously got a pink tone. So perfect as the base layer for kind of around the nose and the feet. So I'm applying a light to medium pressure, making sure it, you know, shows up. I'm kind of doing um, like a small circular motions when I'm shading in the feet because the feet are obviously a completely different texture to fur. So we don't really want to be doing like back and forth like hair motions and um, we just want to you know fill in the feet as evenly as possible so by doing small circular motions using the bluntest part of the tip it just gives you that more kind of even coverage also going to add a little bit down the tail as well kind of where the light meets the shadows so like a third of the way along So to intensify the colours around the nose and the feet, I've picked out three colours. One is the Dark Flesh 40% Luminance Pencil, the Cinnamon Polychromo and the Beige Red Polychromo. All very similar, but all will look kind of really good when they're layered in the right way. So I'm firstly going to use the lightest colour because with colour pencils you always want to work from kind of light to dark. So I'm going to go in with the Beige Red first and I'm going to start with the feet and like I said earlier just doing those small circular motions to kind of build up that pinky tone and give that even coverage all along the feet. Like that, and then I'm going to use it along the left hand side of the nose where that pink colour is a little bit more intense. And almost just kind of blend that out into the surrounding fur. Even around the eye, it is a little bit pinky, so I'm still going to use this beige red but I'm gonna make my pressure a little bit lighter so it makes that color more subtle. But I am just gonna add a little bit around the eye. And then just carry on filling in the rest of the 
section where the nose is. Like that. And then to make that, um, you know, a little bit more intense, obviously it looks quite flat at the minute, especially the feet. So we want to start bringing in some of those darker shadows. So this is where the dark flesh 40% comes in really handy. I use this pencil all the time. Um, I've got about, well, I don't know, about five of them, all stubs because I use them all the time. I need to order some new ones. Um, but even in pet portraits, they're really good for like tongs and um, like gingery fur, even like golden Labradors, golden retrievers, stuff like that. This is a really good color to have. So I'm gonna start by drawing in those lines that separate the kind of fingers or toes, whatever you want to call them, where those shadows are at the darkest on the feet and kind of underneath the body as well, because those feet are almost emerging from underneath the body. So there's obviously those shadows kind of on the top of them. And also at the tips of them as well, where they're kind of bending over and not being hit by the light. And do the same for the right one. It doesn't matter if it's blunt either. I know my pencil's quite blunt, but for this, um, we're not really adding detail. We're just drawing in, like shading in the tonal value really. So a blunt pencil is absolutely fine. So in terms of the nose, I'm going to start with the left hand side, just to kind of define the shape of the nose a little bit more underneath as well. And then with the medium pressure, I'm going to kind of work into the fur. Darkening those pinky tones where they need to be darkened, where those shadows are. So kind of all the way around the nose, like around the edges. And again, really pay attention to the direction of the fur because um, all the way around the nose, it's kind of changing direction. And there's also this little bit on the left as well, just next to the nose where the whiskers are all coming out of. Um, so the texture is slightly different. That fur isn't as fluffy, it's a lot shorter. Um, hence why we can see more of like a pinky tone because it's almost like the skin is showing from underneath. So I'm almost kind of doing like small, like dots or small circular motions, but with a bit of a harder pressure as I'm applying these kind of dotted textures, um, which basically just are gonna start showing where those whiskers are coming out of, which will draw in more towards the end. And whilst I've got the dark flesh 40% in my hand, I'm just gonna also work into that more like warmer toned pinky fur around the eye. And just take that up the face a little bit. Add a tiny little bit to the ear. I'm also just going to add um, 
a little bit down that tail as well. Again, kind of in between the light and the shadows, just to warm up those colours. Like that. So I'm going to use the shade Cinnamon, which is another polychromo. A little bit darker than the beige red that we used before. But I'm going to use this to build up the left hand side of the nose. Where it's almost like a pinky, um, like an orangey pinky colour. A little bit more intense than the rest of the pinky tones on the nose and the feet. I'm going to add a touch to the feet as well. Like that. To get that more orangey colour, I'm going to go in with the Burnt Okra. So you can see how it's still quite subtle, it's not like an overpowering orange. Um, but it is, you know, just adding that little touch to that specific area. I'm also going to use it in various sections of the fur where, you know, it does look a little bit warmer, a little bit more kind of orangey. So especially kind of at the base of the ear, there's a lot of orangey tones going on down there. So I'm kind of building it into the fur that we've already drawn. It's also absolutely fine to use kind of really vibrant colours in a subtle way. Um, again, just to kind of bring out some more of those um, pinky tones. So what I'm going to do is use the salmon, which as you can see is really vibrant, but layered over everything that we've got so far. And if I use it really lightly, it won't be as kind of overpowering as it initially seems. Also going to work into those feet a little bit more. And just define the shape of the nose like that. So at this point we really want to start darkening those shadows to add um, you know that realistic sense of depth so it looks like it's almost popping off the page. So I'm firstly just going to use briefly the French grey 30%. This is like a quite a neutral kind of grey colour. I'm just going to use it underneath the ear and also a little bit in these shadows kind of behind the ear and these are kind of the darkest shadowy areas just like that there is a little bit of grey in that fur so I'm just making sure I get that in before I go in with the darker colours so now I'm going to use the Burnt Umber Polychromo. This is a really kind of dark, almost like a chocolatey brown. So it's going to be perfect for building up all those dark fur details and just making the whole mouse look more realistic. So I'm going to start in those shadows. And again, you want to kind of follow along 
all of the lines that we've we've got in so far so kind of following the direction of the fur throughout um, the whole body and the face So I'm basically drawing in all those darker fur details. So like around the eye and just building up that texture. And it does help if you've got um, a really sharp pencil as well. I think it helps when you're doing fur like this if you kind of use the sharpest point of the tip but also leave little gaps in between your lines so all of this kind of tonal value and all these colours that we've built up almost like show through underneath. Like we did before, when you're approaching the edges of the fur, you kind of want to hold your pencil a little bit further up so it's a bit looser and just kind of let it brush across the surface of the paper to keep those hairs and those lines really faint and really wispy.
also going to use this colour in the feet as well, just to darken kind of in between the like toes and also the darker shadows as well, so kind of where they're emerging from underneath the body. also going to use it on the tail so in the top right hand section where it's really really dark you want to apply like a medium to hard pressure and just kind of build up that shadow from there so it kind of fades off the further it gets down the tail and the darkest point is this bit here you want to release your pressure the further towards the middle you get And I'm just going to add a little bit to the very tip of the tail at the bottom. Like that. I'm going to go in with the Raw Umber 50%, which is another luminance pencil. And it's fairly neutral, but it has got a slight kind of greeny tone to it. So I'm going to use this in the shadows mainly, in the main body of fur. Now I say it's got a green tone to it, but it's that subtle that you can't really tell, especially because we've added quite a few layers now. So when we're kind of shading on the top of all these layers, it won't really show up. Um, but it's just another, you know, layer to, just to blend everything together that we've got down so far. Just kind of merge these detailed lines together a little bit more. So at the bottom of the mouse, kind of underneath where the body is, I'm going to do some lines that kind of emerge from the shadow underneath the body and kind of flick up, back up towards the fur. Like that. Just so we're carrying on with those kind of fluffy edges all the way around, even though this particular bit merges into the shadows. Um, I'll be drawing this section after we've drawn the other mouse. So we can kind of draw those shadows in around the mouse, you know, it, later on in the drawing. The next colour that I'm going to use to build up the mid-tones is the shade Beastry, which is a polychromo. This is a little bit more yellowy, so I'm going to kind of draw from those shadows more into the lighter parts of the fur. Just keep building up that detail and that texture.
going to add a little bit down the tail again kind of in the middle of the um, the light and the dark area you can also start to draw in some of that detail so on the left hand side of the tail the hairs are kind of going in that direction in the middle they're going directly down and on the right they're going kind of diagonally to the right um, so they are only subtle direction changes in the fur but they do make all the difference in making the tail look 3d like that and then I'm going to go back in briefly with the Naples ochre which is what we used um, fairly early on for those kind of brightest yellow undertones. I'm going to bring some of those back up to the surface by working into the lightest parts of the fur. So I'm going to start with the tail and just make the left hand side a little bit more kind of yellowy as well as kind of drawing in some of those individual hairs along the edge now the tail isn't as wispy as the body so you want to keep your lines and your kind of individual hairs quite short And then working back into the body. I'm going to add a touch of the shade green gold which is really really vibrant like a really kind of dark like golden yellowy colour but just in these light sections quite subtly I'm going to add just a little bit to help capture the light in and really bring out those more kind of golden tones in the fur On top of that, I'm going to use the shade Terracotta really, really briefly, just in the areas which are a little bit more kind of orangey golden. And this really makes all the difference, adding these really subtle like tints of colour here and there. It just really does help to capture that lighting and make it look a lot more realistic. I think it's very 
um, tempting to want to go in straight away and just do all those really fine details, but you kind of need to build up the tonal value first in order for it to look realistic. If you go in with the details too soon, it can end up looking quite flat. So including all these colors and, you know, really taking time to build up the layers and, you know, every single little bit of like texture detail and every layer just really makes all the difference. Just going to add a little bit as well to the start of the tail. And kind of fade it off halfway down. So there's three kind of main steps left, I'd say. Um, first one being we want to really darken those details now, really pay attention to those individual hairs that make up the body of the fur and the tail, really kind of intensify those shadows. So I'm going to start with the top right hand side of the tail, really make that quite dark as it is in the reference photo. And as I'm going down the tail, start drawing in some of those individual like darker hairs just kind of build up that detail remember that the hairs are a lot shorter than they are in the main body and then you want to start building up those shadows in the main body of the mouse. Just as we did earlier, doing those back and forth motions with your pencil strokes in the same direction as the fur, just building up that kind of dark pigment. Just so there's a bit more of a contrast, you know, in the fur and that's really what creates the depth. Make sure your pencil is really quite sharp so you can be precise and accurate with where you put in your lines.
I'm just going to use the um, terracotta again just to bring back some of that orange down the centre of the tail at the top. At this point it's kind of a little bit of push and pull like you'll add you know darker pigment or lighter pigment and you'll just need to adjust it slightly or bring another colour you know back in that you've already used just to keep tweaking it. So the second to last step is to use the craft knife slice tool again that we used briefly in the eye. Um, this step is always my favourite step because this is when it really kind of comes to life. When you can like redraw those highlighted hairs back in the fur. So you're almost pulling out those highlights just by lightly scraping off those top layers. And you can achieve some really fine hairs as well to really get that kind of wispy effect. You can have some hairs kind of overlapping, some longer than others. Kind of work into those little gaps that we've left already. And really look at where the light is hitting the fur and really brighten up those parts. use it for kind of little specks of highlights as well around the nose area. the highlights in the feet as well. And just for that really kind of delicate detail that is really hard to achieve just with the colour pencils. I'm also going to use it down the tail, mainly in the highlighted parts, going into the mid-tones.
So that's just added a little bit of texture to the tail there. And the last and final step is to just add in those whiskers around the kind of nose area and also any flyaways along the edge of the fur as well. So I've picked out the Raw Umber Polychromo, which is um, a little bit like the Bee Stray that we used before, but a bit more yellowy. So I'm going to use this first, made sure it's really, really sharp. And with whiskers, what you want to do is kind of start off where, you know, where around where they are and head in the kind of same direction. But don't be too like hung up on making it the exact same as the reference photo because I think if you spend too long kind of following that line along it can end up looking a bit wobbly and not as kind of wispy and light as we want the end of it to be. So like I did all around here you kind of want to hold your pencil further up so it's a bit more free and really lightly Use the tip of the pencil just to do some kind of longer arched lines, which is basically what they are. I know some people really hate drawing whiskers and some people love it. Have some overlapping. You know, you don't want them all going in the same direction because it looks a little bit unnatural. I'll end up redrawing these after we've drawn this bit here, but um, just for the sake of this little mouse, I'm just going to draw them in, or some of them in. And then along the edges, I'm also going to use this to add a few extra, more kind of yellowy, wispy hairs. So now it should be looking really, really fluffy, really soft. like that and then there's also a few darker ones um, kind of in and amongst those whiskers so I've picked out the Van Dyke brown which is quite a warm again like a chocolatey brown and you also want to draw in some of those as well especially on the left hand side of the nose where we started doing those kind of dotted texture details use them as a guide for kind of where you want to start your whiskers like coming out of the face You want to almost release your pressure as you kind of extend the line. So you, you're applying the least pressure right at the end so it almost fades off into the paper. And really look at the direction that they're going in as well. So there's some that are a bit more prominent and there's some that are more subtle and like faded, like almost in the background because there's a lot of whiskers going on. But some are obviously closer and some are more behind. So I'm going to leave that there for part one. I hope you've enjoyed um, the start of this tutorial of the two harvest mice um, and learned some techniques that you can apply in your own work and your own drawings. 
Um, like I said at the start, I've got loads and loads of tutorials over on my Patreon. Um, and that's also like this kind of style, very in informative, in-depth. There's a mixture of like in-depth tutorials and focus tutorials. Um, and you can also get some like one-to-one -one feedback on there as well. Um, a bit more kind of personal like art tutoring, if you will. So I'll, so I'll leave the link in the description below um, if you want to go and check out my Patreon. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please comment below what you thought and um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And please remember to subscribe to my channel to see more.